the groundbreaking work, it was, I believe, your dissertation down in Hyde Park in Chicago in the 1980s about the yield curve as a predictor of a recession. Give us a quick 30 seconds on that, and let me ask you a question. 2019, the yield curve inverted, and the narrative was, oh, it's not going to work this time. The economy's fine. Then we got COVID. Oh, you got lucky because you got this amazing pandemic, or, the, or not amazing, but you got this pandemic that made the yield curve work again. What would be, first of all, what is the, how does the yield curve predict the uh, recessions and would it have worked anyway be based on what we saw in 2019 and with COVID getting in the middle of it? Sure, so uh, it is remarkable to me that so many years later we're still talking about my dissertation. Uh, I haven't published on, on this idea in over 30 years. So the idea is, is a pretty simple idea that asset prices contain information about the future. So think of a stock. Uh, well, that is just the present value of expected uh, future cash flows. And those cash flows are highly dependent upon what happens in the economy. So it turns out that the stock market isn't a particularly good predictor of future economic growth uh, because there's so many things going on. And in my dissertation, I looked at the bond market. The bond market had many advantages. Uh, for example, the cash flows are known. Dividends aren't known. Uh, the maturity is actually known. For a stock, you don't know what the maturity is. And for the bond market, at least for the treasury bonds, it's relatively risk-free, whereas in the stock market, risk is all over the place. And that's why the stock market has so many false signals in terms of uh, recession of prediction. So I uh, came up with this model that inverted yield curves actually had information about future recessions. Uh, it's firmly based upon uh, economic theory, which was very helpful when I defended my dissertation in the late 1980s, uh, because I really only had four observations of recessions. And my committee was somewhat skeptical because I could just be lucky uh, on that. They were impressed by a few things. Number one, I got the double dip uh, recession and other forecasters uh, didn't get that one or those two recessions back to back. Uh, they were impressed that it was based on economic theory. Uh, they were also impressed that at the time to get a real GDP forecast, you had to pay for it. There were various companies that did this with very complex econometric models, potentially thousands of equations. Um, the cost of my forecast was the cost of a Wall Street Journal, like 25 cents and at the time. So they liked that. And I passed, I got my uh, degree. And what usually happens after you publish an idea there are two things that could happen. Number one is that the idea works less um, precisely out of sample. And that's the good scenario. And then the other scenario is it just doesn't work at all, that it was a lucky finding and the papers retracted. So in my particular situation, uh, the model continued to work out of sample and it predicted uh, the next three recessions, uh, including uh, the global uh, financial uh, crisis one year before. And, and then we come to June 30th of 2019. The yield curve has inverted for a full quarter and I go public saying this inversion is likely signaling a recession that will begin in 2020. So um, obviously the model didn't predict COVID, but, and this is really important, we'll never know the counterfactual of what would have happened if COVID didn't actually occur. And at Duke University, we do a quarterly survey of CFOs, and we actually ask them about the probability of a recession. And at that time in June of 2019, over 50% thought a recession would occur in 2020. And if we increase the horizon to the first quarter of 2021, 70% thought 
thought there was going to be a recession. So I think this time around, people actually took that seriously, the yield curve in the summer of 2019. And I do think it might have helped because some companies were being cautious, were watching their cash balances, maybe not willing to take that big loan for an investment project. So when COVID actually did hit, uh, there was some moderation because of the risk management that occurred given the uh, flashing red signal of an inverted uh, yield curve. So one follow a final follow-up question on the yield curve. So a future Fed chairman might listen to this interview and say, oh, I got it. I just won't ever let the yield curve invert. And now that Europe and Japan have shown me the way for negative interest rates, I'll just keep ramming short rates lower and lower and lower and we'll never have another inverted yield curve ever again and we'll never have another recession ever again? Is it really that simple with to, to get rid of the business cycle? No, it's not that simple. So I said that this idea was based upon economic theory and it's a really simple theory. So it doesn't take into account uh, the Fed interventions. So uh, I've long said that the Fed likely is just adding noise uh, to this uh, where they try to do their yield curve control and that's nothing new. We had that in 1960s. So my dissertation uses data that goes back uh, many, many years. So uh, it is possible that they could uh, inject so much noise uh, by manipulating the yield curve that the yield curve loses its predictability. So that is definitely possible. Again, this is just a, a, like a model. It's a simple model. Like I said, that you could have an econometric model with thousands of equations. This is a single equation. It's a single variable. It's really, really simple. Uh, it's interesting. I get criticized on social media uh, because the yield curve model isn't very good at predicting the depth of a recession. So you think about it, that it's good at actually having an advanced signal, let's say a year in advance of a recession, is really good at predicting the duration of recessions. So the global financial crisis, for example, the inversion was exactly the length of the recession, but it's not as good as getting the depth. And well, okay, I get two out of three with a single variable. And, and look, if I'm doing economic forecasting, yes, I'll use the yield curve, but there's plenty of other information that I would use. It's a good rule of thumb. It is probably the most powerful indicator of future economic activity, but there's other things that you need to look at.